Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And uh, I am back in my training get up again. So you know what that means. We're gonna be doing some, uh, some, some draws and some dry work. So big shout out to Rhett Numair over at Demonstrated Concepts. He is the guy that recently has pioneered and sort of reintroduced this deep carry configuration back into the uh, the general consciousness of the gun world. Now, if you talk to some of the old guard folks, especially the uh, kind of the salty old cops that did a lot of undercover work, this is not a novel carry method, but it has certainly been improved with the introduction of the Filster Enigma. So, what I've started doing is playing with working that into uh, kind of you know my my carry configuration. So for those of you that are unfamiliar, the distinction with deep carry versus con conventional inside the waistband carry is that with a deep carry setup, the entire gun is riding below the belt line. So regardless of if there is a shirt in the equation or not, nothing is visible. Now, the big advantage to this, especially when you are in business casual or more formal attire, is you don't have to worry about defeating a cover garment in the same way as when you're running a tucked configuration. I've done a couple of videos on that. I'm gonna to link to them here because um, if you are running a tuckable holster and you have your shirt tucked in over the gun, there are definitely some considerations that you have to plan for there. Um, it's real easy to kind of get the order of operations wrong and get hung up in your shit. So the advantage with this is that all I've got to do is get my fingers down in between the, uh, the belt and kind of the, the gap right about in here that's created where the grip stops, kick it over, and then produce the pistol. Now you might be asking why am I doing this with a blue gun when I've done other dry work free, uh, previously with a cleared firearm. Two reasons, and they kind of overlap, so maybe call it one and a half. Firstly, uh, this overall setup is something I'm less familiar with. And so because of that, there is a potential higher margin of error. And so given that there is no need to be working with a live firearm, I'm not doing trigger presses, I'm not doing live work, then using an inert, harmless chunk of plastic uh, is a better idea. Secondarily, because the whole rig is riding below the belt line, and even though this particular holster is a rather uh, iridescent color, it's harder to actually look the gun all the way in because you're having to kind of fight with the belt and, and all of that. So I'm giving myself a wider margin for error. But I, uh, what I'm gonna try and do, and the, the, the trick is that um, the range facility where I could realistically work this is on the complete opposite side of town. And uh, so, getting up there and even just getting some reps in, let alone getting anything filmed, is, uh, is a bit challenging. But the good news is I am gonna be running this uh, setup next month when I take John Valentine's, uh, he do, he's doing a one day class here in Houston that is kind of similar to the actual live fire portion of ECQC where it is the defensive entangled type of, uh, of handgun work. And, you know, again, that is a class, it's a known quantity, and I've already talked to him about this, so he's gonna let me work live with this type of thing. So, um, I'm gonna be reporting on my findings and uh, kind of letting you know how things are impacted. One of the big things that I've found already is that when Rhett does this, he's typically doing it either in jeans or chinos or some other kind of heavier duty pant. 
things change a little bit when you start introducing dress slacks. The fabric obviously is thinner, and so that poses a couple of challenges. The first one is if you are going to make this your everyday carry setup, and you're going to be wearing, you know, business casual, business formal, something like this, where you're wearing lighter weight fabric pants, you're going to need a lot of them in the rotation because uh, when I sit down specifically, even with a relatively full cut, this pulls across the, uh, the, the front panel enough to where it's going to eventually wear through the, uh, the, the front panel next to the fly if I'm not careful. Secondarily, even when standing, um, again, this is kind of incumbent on, on the fit of the trouser, but there is going to be a bit more accentuated gun dick with this uh, than there is with a traditional uh, IWB that I've found so far. Now, that's with my build, um, so your mileage may vary on that. Um, so just to bear in mind, if you're going to be wearing, this is not going to work with extremely fitted pants, and it's going to be friendlier to darker colors, obviously, as opposed to lighter colors, just because the, um, the darker colors don't really kind of uh, belie the changes in topography and all the bumps and, and curves as much as the lighter fabrics do. So, um, that's kind of all I've got on this so far. Those were the, the initial impressions. I don't have draw to first times on it yet. I will be doing uh, some of this against a timer and uh, I'll, I'll actually do a side-by-side -side of my normal appendix draw, which usually is floating around one and a half seconds, and see exactly how much different this is. I feel like it's going to be a wash, simply from the standpoint that, yeah, the gun is deeper and uh, a little bit harder to get to, but the time savings of not having to get a garment out of the way, uh, I suspect is going to offset that. So, is this something that you've tried so far? If so, I want to hear about your experiences down in the comments. If you haven't, uh, and you have questions about it, put those down there as well. So, aside from that, it's what I got for you this week. I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous, and stay sharp. <laughs>